Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity number 10 in our Tetrix Prism programming guide. This one is called Simplifying the Square. Now, in our last activity, activity 9, we, we actually made our robot drive in a square and we were a little bit intimidated by that long list of commands that we had in our sketch window. So what we want to do now is actually show you um, something that you can do within the coding of the sketch to make that uh, appear a little bit simpler, um, not only to view, but also simpler for you to uh, program. And this is one of those things that people might ask, well, you know, why do we even make our robot drive in a square? What's the benefit from that from a coding perspective? And for me, this is one of the fundamental activities that uh, are important for you as a programmer because one of the things that you have to be able to do when you are working with robots and you, you're programming those is to be able to identify and implement repeatable code or repeatable behaviors because that's one of the main functions that a robot does for us. It, it takes the mundane, repeatable task that is really uh, repetitive for the human and we allow a machine to do that, but for that machine to be able to do that, we as the programmers or the humans have to be able to identify those types of behaviors and be able to define and implement those. And that's what a basic square is, right? We're going to define and um, identify areas that can be repeated and actually implement that in a, a repetitious way uh, for us to create the square. So with that as kind of a background, let's go ahead and gather our material. We obviously need our prism task bot. It has to have the prism mounted on it. We need to have a charged battery ready to go there. We need to have our USB cable and we have to have our computer with our software on it. So let's go ahead and let's start by opening our sketch. Let's go ahead and launch our software in the Arduino software if we go up to our examples. Uh, Tetrix Prism. This one is activity 10, drive square number two. We're going to open that. And again, we've talked about the fact that kind of the best way to experience these is through examples. Uh, so that's why we've <laughs> created those. I'm going to expand my window here so that I can get a good look at everything going on in the window. And I'm going to uh, put this out to the side. Now, again, when we look at our comments at the top of the screen this is very similar to uh, what we had in activity 9 but you can see that we're uh, actually calling a square driving pattern using a forward and right turn function and if we look in our window we've we've added some things from a structure standpoint within the sketch excuse me that we need to talk about and identify in the first part uh, the void setup that part is all the same. We've got the prism begin, prism set motor invert. But if we look down in our main loop, we can see some different things. And the first one is a for loop that you can see by the comment out the to the side that we're expected to do this four times. And we're incrementing, incrementing each time by one. And then we're ending that for loop with a prism end. Or actually, it's outside the for loop, a prism end to stop our program. And then down below our, our main loop, we actually have two new functions, one that's called forward and one that's right turn. And these are defined functions. So when we think about the learning involved here, um, and I'm going to say right now that um, if you want to explore this in more depth, I would encourage you to go to www.arduino.cc. Uh, and look at the tutorials there to find more uh, information and more in-depth type of uh, examples for um, the different types of structures, specifically for loops, or reference your, uh, actually, uh, if you've got a, a, a coding tutorial about the Arduino code, reference that to learn more in-depth about this. So now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and upload it to your robot and see what it actually does. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my connection to my computer. Right, like we always do, make the connection to the front of my prism, turn my prism on so that I've got my blue light there and my green light showing me I'm ready to go. I'm going to go into my software, let's verify our code. 
Looks like everything is okay there. Now we're going to go ahead and upload. And I'm going to look for my data light. And once I get that done, I should see my solid green light there. I'm ready to go. So like we had before, we don't have enough room up here. So I'm going to unplug my robot and I'm going to set it on the floor and we're going to execute that. So now that we've done that, let's talk a little bit more about our for loop. The for statement basically is used to replete a block, of, a block of code that are enclosed in the curly braces. We use a couple things. We use an increment counter to count the iterations and terminate the loop. The for loop is really useful when you define those set of repeatable behaviors and you want to do them for a certain uh, number of times. We're also using something called called functions that are outside. Those are the ones I pointed to at the bottom of the, the sketch that are outside the main setup loop. And there, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with the term subroutines, this would be similar to what in other programs you would call a subroutine, where you're going to do those several times, but you define that routine outside the main loop. I, I do want to look a little closer at the variables for the for statement because those are important for us to understand. If we look at that for loop and inside the parentheses, the, the parameters that we can actually change, there is an initialization uh, parameter at the very first, that init x equals zero. That basically is just telling you where do you want your loop to start counting. And in this case, we want to start counting it from zero. Um, the next actually is a test condition. So that you're saying, okay, how many loops do we, or do we want this to uh, execute? And you're saying, okay, as long as we're less than three, we want it to continue to actually execute the loop. So if you count from zero, zero, one, two, three, that would be four times. So you need to take that into account. Where you start and where you end is defined by that, that value in the middle as far as the test condition. And last but not least is the value on the end where we're telling the for loop in what kind of increments we want to uh, count up in this case. It would be incrementing by one. So again, if you want a little bit more information about that, I would advise you to check online. And if you look down in the called functions, they're basically pretty, pretty basic. They're, they're commands that we've used before, but we, they're actually using those to define the repeatable actions of that square. The first one forward. We're defining what it takes to actually make our robot go forward in the forward leg of our square. And that's just a set motor powers and a delay and then a hard break. So that makes very simple sense. And then the right turn, again, that's just a basic behavior that we learned in our first drive square activity where what's it take to make our robot actually make a, a 90 degree turn? And we've defined that. And when we put those two together, we can do those four times and that will actually define our square behavior. So that's pretty, pretty basic when you break it down that way, I hope. So let's talk about some of the real world connections. Again, repeatable behavior, and I'm gonna take this maybe somewhere that uh, as students or uh, some people that are involved with sports, uh, maybe this might ring a bell when you're practicing for something, for instance, like a uh, shooting a free throw or uh, putting on a green. You want to be able to create behaviors with your body that you can repeat time after time because it's a very similar action. So if you can get the feel of your body and understand what it means to, to make the same motor or actually muscle motion each and every time, it's much more likely that you're going to get more consistent in your making your free throw. So it's very similar to this type of an activity. You're trying to uh, define a behavior and then be able to consistently implement that behavior so that the end result each and every time is a square. So that's kind of a hopefully a, a connection that you can make there. Uh, let's talk about the stem extensions. For science, we can talk about the relationship between time, distance, and velocity, technology, 
Uh, again, how do we measure the time with a microprocessor? Measuring turning ra uh, radius. Again, some of the same things we talked about with activity number nine, those stem connections are gonna be very much the same. Engineering, how do you program design for a defined path? The math, some of the relationships of, between sides and angles of a square, and then actually measuring, um, measuring that angle. So, how do we put this all together and, and actually hack the code with this next activity? And I would encourage you to um, try and recreate this on your own the structure of, of the sketch with the for loop. Explore with creating repeatable type activities. Explore perhaps make, making called functions in a defined type of behavior. If you can, if you can define something that it would be a, a loop or a repeatable behavior. Um, and then see if you can apply some of the other things that we, we've learned throughout the, the activities. Maybe add a blinking light so that it blinks a, a red LED when it's on the, on the straight function, and uh, maybe on the turn you'd blink the green light or something like that, but practice your coding. See if you can um, create some additional behaviors that go with this hopefully simpler method or simplifying the code with the for loop in creating the square. So I hope you found that informational, inspirational, and like we say for this, go out there, have some fun, build some robots, Come back and see us.